Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church, located in Charlotte, North Carolina. St. Mark's is a historic congregation of the ELCA that unconditionally welcomes all people of all ethnicities, genders, identities, and backgrounds. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. We are conveniently located in Myers Park on Queens Road, just south of Charlotte's Uptown and adjacent to the Duke Mansion and the greenery of Edge Hill Park. St. Mark's Church building is easy to find with its marble Christus Victor, while inside, the mid-century design of the sanctuary reaches upward, inspiring us with Christ's blessing and beautiful stained glass windows featuring all the people of God in all their diversity. There is a place for you at St. Mark's.
seated. Good morning. Welcome to St. Mark's Lutheran Church. Today is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and today in the gospel we will hear Jesus say, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus lives in each of us as life and resurrection, allowing us to participate in eternal life today and each day. I'd like to give a warm welcome to visitors who may be worshiping with us this morning. Your presence among us is always a blessing to us. I have a couple announcements this morning. Um, this coming Wednesday is the last Wednesday for Lenten midweek suppers. There's a sh sign up board out in the gathering place. If you would like to join us for uh, a simple Lenten supper on Wednesday, please sign up out in the narthex and uh, stay for Lenten worship prayer at 7 on Wednesday. Next Sunday is Palm Sunday. It's hard to believe. It seems like we just started Lent not that long ago. And next Sunday is also then the, uh, the deadline or the cutoff date for ordering Easter lilies. If you have not yet ordered an Easter lily or would like to make a dedication or a memorial in the bulletin to, to someone with an Easter lily, please uh, use one of the sign-up sheets out in the gathering place and place it in the um, offering plate or give it to me after the service. That would be fine. Um, please sign up for the Easter lilies. Um, please see the bulletin for the upcoming Holy Week schedule uh, for Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, two Easter services on Sunday morning. And in between the two services, there will be a reception with uh, breakfast sort of refreshments and goodies on Easter morning. Please join us and let us celebrate our Lord's resurrection together. <laughs> Finally, if you have been joining us online and have not been to St. Mark's before, or haven't been here in a while, please consider joining us on Sunday morning at 8.30 or 10.30 for worship, or call us or email us in the church office that we might get to know you and be able to connect with you. I have one final announcement that I just realized. Um, there are some uh, baskets or hampers out in the gathering place for uh, donations for a lifespan um, uh, drive that we're doing uh, and there's a list of what's being sought. Um, you may, many of you um, may not be familiar with the name Lifespan, but I know some of you are. Lifespan is an organization that began almost 50 years ago at St. Mark's. It'll be 50 years this November, November 1973. Lifespan began in St. Mark's um, and uh, was initially part of our ministry. And for nearly the first 20 years of Lifespan's existence, it was known as St. Mark's Center. And now, today, Lifespan is, is working in over 20 counties in, um, in North Carolina, working with developmentally disabled um, children, young people, and adults. It's a, it's a worthy organization and part of the, the mission history of our church. If that sounds interesting, please look for these little um, uh, shopping lists, let's call them, out in the gathering place. We've come to worship our Lord. Let us quiet our hearts now as we prepare for worship. <clears throat> Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who journeys with us these 40 days and sustains us with the gift of grace. Amen. Remembering the waters of holy baptism, let us acknowledge before God and before one another our need for repentance and God's mercy. Holy God, we confess to you our faults and failings. Too often we neglect and do not trust your holy word. We take for ourselves instead of giving to others. We spoil rather than steward your creation. We cause hurt, though you call us to heal. We choose fear over compassion. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us as we seek to follow in your way of life. Amen. Hear the good news. God so loved the world that God gave the only Son so that all may receive life. This promise is for you. God embraces you with divine mercy, forgives you in Christ's name, and revives you in the Spirit's power. 
Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, your Son came into the world to free us all from sin and death. Breathe upon us the power of your Spirit, that we may be raised to new life in Christ and serve you in righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from the book of Ezekiel, the 37th chapter. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, Mortal, can these bones live? I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. 
I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I had been commanded and as I prophesied, suddenly there was a noise, a rattling and the bones came together, bone to its bone. I looked and there were sinews on them and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath, prophesy, mortal, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe upon these slain that they may live. I prophesied as he commanded me, and the breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet, a vast multitude. Then he said to me, mortal, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They say, oh, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We are cut off completely. Therefore prophesy and say to them, thus says the Lord God, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from your graves. O oh, my people, and I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from your graves, O oh, my people. I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I will place you on your own soil. Then you shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken and will act, says the Lord. The word of the Lord. with you 
the second reading is from the book of Romans, the eighth chapter. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on the spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot, and those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, you are in the Spirit, since the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies, also through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now a certain man was ill, Lazarus of Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. Mary was the one who anointed the Lord with perfume and wiped his, wiped his feet with her hair. Her brother Lazarus was ill, so the sisters sent a message to Jesus. Lord, he whom you love is ill. But when Jesus heard it, he said, This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory, so that the Son of Man may be glorified through it. Accordingly, though Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus, after hearing that Lazarus was ill, he stayed two days longer in the place where he was. Then after this, he said to the disciples, Let us go to Judea again. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, the Jews were just now trying to stone you, and you are going there again. Jesus said, Are there not twelve hours of daylight? Those who walk during the day do not stumble because they see the light of, the, of this world. And those who walk at night stumble because the light is not in them. After saying this, he told them, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I am going there to waken him. The disciples said to him, Lord, if he has fallen asleep, he will be all right. Jesus, however, had been speaking about his death, but they thought he was referring merely to sleep. Then Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead. For your sake, I am glad I was not there so that you may believe, but let us go to him. Thomas, who was called the twin, also said to his fellow disciples, let us also go, that we may die with him. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. Now Bethany was near Jerusalem, some two miles away, and many of the Jews had come to Martha and Mary to console them about their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him, while Mary stayed at home. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died, but even now I know that God will give you whatever you ask of him. Jesus said to her, Your brother will rise again. Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When she had said this, she went back and called her sister Mary and told her privately, The teacher is here and is calling for you. And when she heard it, she got up quickly and went to him. 
Now Jesus had not yet come to the village, but was still at the place where Martha had met him. The Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary get up quickly and go out. They followed her because they thought she was going to the tomb to weep there. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the, Jew, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a large stone was laying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, and I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. <coughs> Jesus said to, said to them, unbind him and let him go. Many of the Jews, therefore, who had come with Mary and had seen what Jesus did, believed in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. The journey of Lent to Jesus' cross and resurrection is a journey that focuses and renews our faith upon, solely upon, the living person of Jesus Christ. We live through, not through theologians and creeds and theologies, but we live through the resurrection and the life, the living presence of Jesus Christ. In today's Gospel, Jesus' words to Martha are also words spoken to each of us. I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, will live. And everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? Words spoken to Martha, but also to each of us. Jesus' words, I am point to him as the only source of resurrection and life. Indeed, for all of us who are familiar with the Gospel of John, we're familiar with Jesus' I am phrases. There's seven of them. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the door of the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the true vine and you are the branches. However, Jesus' words, I am the resurrection and the life, are words that confound every attempt for, of us to, to think of them as a metaphor. Jesus is speaking very plainly and in a, in a real sense here that he is resurrection and life. Jesus is saying that everyone who believes in him, in their living and in their dying, already partic participates in his resurrection and in his life. Faith allows us to participate in the resurrection each and every day. As we say, Lord, live in me again today. Renew in me. Grant me your vision again today. Allow me to be your light in this world for others. Jesus' words have deep meaning for our humanity because we know that even though we live, 
we will also one day die. Jesus is focusing our present and our future upon the meaning of the life that he gives us through faith. Jesus lives in the water and the word of holy baptism. Jesus lives in the bread and the wine that we receive in holy communion. Jesus lives so that he might live in each of you. In the letter to the Romans that we heard read a moment ago, Paul writes, If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies. Through his spirit that dwells in you, life to your mortal bodies. That phrase, mortal bodies, has been on my mind all week. Because to be mortal also means that though we are alive, we are also dying. He gives life to our dying bodies. And through his spirit that dwells in us, we already participate in life and resurrection. All of us are very aware of our mortality. And yet we live in a world that does two very interesting things. First, the world tries to tell us that we can prolong life by staying young. And so we worship at the altar of youth. And in doing so, in doing so, we do not allow ourselves to grow fully into maturity as human beings. Jesus is being very real with us in these words in the gospel message today, telling us that we will die and that we will also live in him. And we can live with him each and every day. Second, the world tells us daily that we can avoid death just simply by ignoring it. Just don't even talk about it. Pretend it's not even in the room. It's not up for discussion. You'll live forever. Jesus came into this world to talk about our dying and our being raised through his death and his life. Jesus came into this world to talk about death and life, to talk about what it means to be a human being. So when Paul writes that the spirit who raised Christ from the dead is the spirit that dwells in you, Paul is inviting us to consider that the resurrection life of Jesus lives in us how often do we think about that each day as we gather our things and get ready to go out the door in the morning to get on with our daily tasks? Do we realize and recognize that there's a bit of eternity already here dwelling in us, giving us direction and hope? By over-sentimentalizing, you know, the humanity of Jesus, we forget that Jesus of Nazareth is also the creative word, the living word that became flesh and dwelt among us. His life is beyond all human life and death. His life is the breath, the ruach in Hebrew, the breath of creation, the creative word that brings into being all that has life. His breath and his life is before all creation. The Lenten journey to the cross and resurrection is the journey to the cradle of creation so that we might daily be recreated by the creative word and breath of God. Yet Martha and Mary's very human question is also ours. Notice that this question was voiced twice in today's gospel by each of the sisters. Lord, if you had been here, if you had only been here, my brother would not have died. What they are voicing is that death is that final boundary whose finality we are powerless against. And this is why Jesus delayed in going to Lazarus and in going to the tomb. Jesus waited until the grave had claimed Lazarus. Jesus delayed in order to cause faith in Mary, Martha, in those who were mourning, 
and to raise Lazarus from the dead. Jesus is transforming our grief and suffering into life-giving faith. And so Jesus told Martha, your brother will rise again. And she replied to him, I know that he will rise again on the resurrection of the last day. Martha really didn't yet believe. Martha was sort of voicing the knowledge she had that there will be a resurrection out there on the final day. Yeah, I've heard about it. I believe in that. But she didn't yet believe in Jesus as the resurrection and the life. Jesus is the reality beyond all of our knowledge about God's promises. Jesus is the reality of life and resurrection and the only way of knowing his resurrection life each and every day. This is why Ezekiel's words this morning are so powerful. They cause us to remember again and think about the breath of life that has been put inside of each of us that works and functions so automatically. I mean, who among us in the morning wakes up thinking, the first thing your eyes open, thinking, I'm breathing again. Thank goodness, you know. We don't even think about it. It's automatic. Try to stop your breath, and you can't. It is life in you that has been placed in you as a gift. Thus says the Lord your God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you, and you shall live. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, is the eternal word that breathes in you, causing you to have words of hope, words of life for those around you. The life that Jesus exists in beyond all human life and death is given to us in faith as the promise of eternal life and resurrection. The promise of Ezekiel's words, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live, are revealed in Jesus, the one who went to Lazarus' tomb. The, probably the greatest expression of Jesus' humanity is recorded in today's gospel as Jesus is overcome by grief and love for his friend. Because Jesus shared the grief of Lazarus's relatives and friends, we can also see Jesus present and sharing in the grief of all who have lost loved ones who have gone to the grave. We might say that we can see Jesus standing at the grave of each and every tomb, weeping and promising life and resurrection. And yet, Lazarus' tomb is not simply a foreshadowing of Jesus' own tomb. Jesus is the living word who creates life out of death and gives light in the darkness for the living, for those who are alive. And that is why he says to Martha, I am the resurrection and the life, so that we too might claim his life now while we are alive, and that we might cling to his life as we die. And so Jesus ordered them to take away the stone and said, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? The glory of God is Jesus, the life and the resurrection. And so Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. This is not the empty tomb of Easter. Lazarus' tomb represents Ezekiel's promise that God will open every grave, transforming every human death with God's spirit of resurrection life and allowing us through God's spirit dwelling in us to live each and every day with that promise of life and resurrection. Finally, Jesus' words, un unbind him and let him go speak about the absolute freedom and liberation that we have from the fear of death. In Jesus standing before the threshold of death, human grief and pain are given hope in Jesus' presence and promise of life and resurrection. Jesus is the door of the sheep 
the opening of death to life, giving power. Jesus is the good shepherd who visits every grave, offering and leading the sheep to eternal life. And so this morning, Paul encourages us to set our mind, to set our mind on the spirit of Christ who is life and peace. As I said earlier, do you set your mind on that person each day as you breathe in and out, giving thanks for this breath of life, giving thanks for the knowledge that God's presence dwells in you? Yet our world, as each of us know, can be a pretty dark place. It can be a place where we place people in living tombs because of who they are because perhaps of the color of their skin or their ethnicity or their gender or whoever they are, we might place them in a place of death, a living death, walling them off from community acceptance and life. Jesus unbinds us from the threat of death, unbinds us by saying, I am life and resurrection, and you have my life and resurrection so that we might also unbind those who are unfairly walled into living deaths every day. Jesus gives us his resurrection life today, not just as some abstract future, but as something we can live with and cling to, power for living today. Resurrection life with Christ is about unbinding and freeing not only ourselves, but unbinding and freeing our neighbor so that our neighbor might know the resurrection and life and hope that is Jesus Christ. Christ lives in you, freeing you from death so that you might live for and unbind others. Christ lives in you, giving you power to unbind and free all who live in the shadow of death by walking with them, by weeping with them, by sharing in their trials and sufferings. Christ lives in you so that others might live through you.
with the whole church, let us confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Let us be together in prayer. <clears throat> Sustained by God's abundant mercy, let us pray for the church, the world, and all of creation. Lord of life, you have breathed into us the breath of life. Continually enliven your church with new life in the spirit by deepening the partnerships of your church ecumenically, globally, and locally, so that in all of our relationships, we might be of one mind and spirit with Jesus Christ. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord of spring flowers, verdant grass, awakening trees, and everything that has life, teach us to live beyond mere appreciation of nature. Guide us to actions that protect all and nurture all of your creation. You have given us years on this earth to enjoy its bounty. Help us not plunder these vast resources so that future generations also may enjoy spring flowers and be sustained by food and renewed environment. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord of peace. In Christ, you give hope to all peoples and nations, unbinding and freeing us from the tomb of death. Guide nations and their leaders to live with the light and hope of Christ so that wars and violence cease, refugees and strangers find welcome, and all humanity sees that you love us all as one family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Lord of time and inestimable power, Give us faith to hope beyond what we can see and trust your purpose as we await answers to our prayers. Nurture in us faith that will sustain us through confusion, danger, grief, delay, and loss. Give us courage to follow when we are afraid, mourn, feel alone, and cannot understand what you are doing. Keep your word ever present in our lives to give us hope that can sustain us through our darkest moments. Grant healing and encouragement to Jay, David, Charlie, Virginia, Joseph, Robert, Rachel, Danielle, Carl, David, Van, Diane, Mindy, Steve, Oakley, Stanley, Arlene, Anthony, Sergey, Bill, Christopher, Joan, Jane, Cliffia, Jamie, Jimmy, John, Dan, Roxy, Susan, and Katie. Merciful God, receive, receive our, our prayer. prayer. Lord of the resurrection. Help us to live into the promise of Jesus that though we die, we will live. Enable us daily to be living signs of the resurrection life of Christ Jesus, always offering hope and light to others on their journeys through life's darkest valleys. Merciful God, receive, receive our prayer. Lord of the impossible, revive us when we are like dry bones. Give us dreams, goals, zeal, fire, and enthusiasm founded in your word. Orient us to live beyond our past accomplishments and into energized futures. 
shine your light on us, awaken us to purposeful lives according to your will. Stir up our spirits. Give us the strength to accomplish the task that you set before us. Breathe into us vitality to live according to your word and to remain faithful to you, our living Lord. Merciful God, receive our, our prayer. prayer. We lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your steadfast love and your promise to renew your whole creation through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share Christ's peace with one another.
Let us pray. God of good gifts, receive these and all our offerings as we present them in faithful service for the sake of your gospel. Prepare our hearts to receive you in this meal as you pour out your very presence through Christ Jesus, the wellspring of eternal life. Amen. <laughs> The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right. indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you almighty and merciful God through our Savior Jesus Christ you call your people to cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast that renewed in the gift of baptism we may come to the fullness of your grace. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all of them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Receive Jesus, our strength in the wilderness.
may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, bless you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Embodied God, at your table we have tasted the goodness of Jesus. With the eyes of our hearts open to your promise, empower us to hear the needs of our neighbors and touch the world with your love. Amen. God, the giver of love, Christ, the resurrection and the life, and the Holy Spirit of rebirth bless you in this Lenten journey. Amen. serve in love. Thanks be to God.
please join us for worship at 8.30 or 10.30 a.m. on Sundays with inspiring music and talented musicians as we gather around God's Word and celebrate the sacraments together. We are a congregation that helps children, youth, and families grow together in Christ with events for children and youth, a confirmation program, educational activities, mission trips and retreats to camps like Luther Ridge that help young people and families grow in faith and service to others. St. Mark's is a place for families and people of all generations to grow together in Christ. St. Mark's is a church with a servant's heart. Each Thursday, St. Mark's Soup Kitchen feeds our neighbors. We also partner with local schools and nonprofit organizations. We participate in Kairos Prison Ministry Weekends, sending cookies as a sign of our love. We follow Jesus in mission, offering food, shelter, and hope to those in need. And we are blessed by local artists, musicians, and ecumenical relationships. There's a place for you at St. Mark's. Please join us for worship and stay with us to serve Jesus Christ by helping others discover God's amazing grace. For more information about worship and service opportunities, please visit us at stmarkscharlotte.org. There is a place for you at St. Mark's. May the peace of Christ be with you.